Hello everyone, let's make a Yoda coin today for our Star Wars fan and welcome back to PJ Chen Design Channel. This channel is to share Rhino 3D knowledge to help students and 3D model professionals to learn various Rhino techniques. We will discuss how to do a coin age and low relief with Rhino 3D model in this tutorial. Are you ready? Let's get started. Before we start making this Yoda coin tutorial, I would like to put the disclaimer here. This tutorial is intended for the uh, education purpose. The website I'm going to show you or any trick that I show you, please make sure that you have a copyright or from original author with the agreement to use it. This is not intended for sale. Before we actually starting our model, I always like to study the um, construction and see how things is constructed. So let's go to the Google and type it coin age. With this coin age, it's actually there are a few different type of a coin age and then I would just like to have something really simple. As you can see on this image right here, it look like it has been Boiling out of some of the um, cylinder type of a structure or some sort of a triangle structure. You can also see there's a little bit bevel edge. So in our model, we would like to do a bevel edge and also the cylinder cut out. Okay, so let's get started with the coin edge and then we can talk about the low relief after we finish that. Let's start this coin with the cylinder tool. It's living under the solid tool. You go with the cylinder and I like to make this coin about one inch. So right here the diameter I'm going to type one inch. Enter. How high is it? Um, I'm roughly gonna set it up to 2.5 millimeter. Okay so we have this one. Then we need to have a bevel edge right here. So that's going to the solid tool. Then you have this, uh, it's called chamfer H. And then let's set it for about 0.5 millimeter and see if it's going to be too big. It looks all right. I mean, it could be smaller, but it's really depends. There's no standard for it. Um, based on my knowledge, so you can set it as tiny as you want, right? Next of, next of it, uh, we can simply using the cylinder again, but I like to use a little bit more triangle-ish looking. I think that looks nicer, more like a gear. So I'm going to use this um, polygon tool and just snipping right at the quadrant, holding my shift. So I get this triangle, let me pull it up a little bit. So I get this triangle there. But if you cut out something like really sharp like this, it's not really comfortable when you touch it. So let me make it upside down, so rotate 180 degree. And then I wanted to have all the edges rounded. So I'm going to do is, using the corner and let's set it up for 0.3 and pick up our polyd curve 0.3 and then so we get this kind of round-ish things there I'm going to move it down and just have it cut it just above the line right there which is the edge of our chamfer edge and let's make it a little bit longer. So make it into the solid straight. Let's take a look on the other view and then let's move up. So you're kind of guessing what I'm going to do is to bowling differences up, right? But you don't want to cut it way too deep. So let's move it a little bit like this, okay? Sometimes you just need to try a few times to get the best uh, result. So let's try this one. Let's do the polar array. It's under the array, then you have the polar array. Hit enter, um, zero enter, and I'm just gonna guessing for 45 and see how they come out. 
All right, so it come out all right, but I really don't like the distance there. So I'm gonna increase it a little bit. Let it try 50, maybe 52. All right, so it look better. And then, so we are going to use this as a cutting tool. So I'm going to use bowling tool, bowling difference. This will be bowling out for the rest of it. So this is what we get for the coin age, right? If you cut it in too much over this age right there, it won't look good, right? So study a little bit about the structure and then you will see, you will find the best um, position for the cutter. The same structure can be used on the coin age on the watch design. Uh, you can see this is really similar structured compared to the one that we just finished. Next, we are going to find an image and put it on top of it. The website that I like here is the online community. It's called GrabCat Community on the left top corner. So you go to www.grabcat.com and in their library, you can type in anything to search uh, the model that people share over there. Most of the time they are STL files, so I'm going to uh, type it here for Yoda and see what come up with. So right here that you got a lot of things that relate to the things that you just searching. It could be their name, but it could be the object itself. So this is the one that I found. And if you look at inside, you're going to see they have few, uh, a lot of files to share. And this is the one we're looking for, yoda.stl file. When you import a file, they will be more of a, um, in the mesh instead of the 3DM model because that is the universal file to read on all different type of the software. So go ahead and download it. And then after that, you can import into Rhino. When we are in the Rhino, we can use the import. Then you will go to where you download this file and you will find this STL file and we want to open it. Click OK to import the file. The file will be the size for the original size. A lot of time when you import them, they are pretty big uh, for jewelry use. As you can see, my coin is like really small there. So we need to scale it. But before we scale it, be really careful. A lot of time, the eyeball is actually separated from the model. So we want to bowling them. Instead of using the regular bowling, we want to go to the mesh. Under the mesh tool, you have a bowling tool, but it's mesh bowling unit. So that's unit them first. So now they are unit. Uh, double check, make sure under the property they are closed mesh. Okay, because if you do want to print out, you need to make sure everything is closed, right? So let's go ahead to scale it with the gumball, make them smaller so uh, fitting into the size that we want. And I also want to do um, going to the right view and I wanted to rotate it. 90 degree so it will light down uh, like this way and I also wanted to um, rotate it into any of the angle I like I personal prefer this way and scale it down a little bit all right so if we go ahead and put this down and that's turning into the render view all you see is something like this. It's pretty tall. So we need to make them um, kind of 1D scale it down. So it's make them more flat a little bit there. Okay. And then let's move it up. Move the model up a little bit. So that way we can see the whole head, right? Seems like there's no problem to do that. Um, if, it, if you are going to mail it out, 
all the undercut will be uh, disappeared. That will be a straight line coming down here. But rest of it, it should be fine. If you're going to mail it, it shouldn't be have too much of a problem. Now the problem is the ear right here. And that's the reason I picked this model here is because you do 1D scale is uh, scaling down everything. But if we are going to 3D print this guy, we need to make sure there's enough um, material at, at the bottom. Uh, easy way to do is you can put the block in the back and kind of uh, boiling them together. But I personally like to do is using the command is called cage edit. So I'm typing cage edit and then I'm uh, clicking on the Yoda only and then choose the first one called bounding box and then enter the preset is XYZ will be 444 which means they will give you four point to edit I actually want more point on it so X I'm going to change to 12 Y I'm going to change to 12 and Z I'm going to change to 12 and I enter very quickly you're going to see a box coming out and enter one more time then you will have a lot of control point to edit right so basically everything it look all right beside this ear right there I'm going to lock the background which is that coin and then I'm coming here I want to pick the areas for the ear only so I'm going to pick up those area actually I might need to include in few more points right there okay so those are the point I want to do the editing and then the idea is I want to pull the ear down so let's take a look at the front view I want to pull the ear down but I don't want to change anything above the ear so I'm going to do is I'm going to deselect all the point on the top okay and then I'm using the gumball to move things down and it, since this is a mesh so it's going to be a little bit slow okay so now I pull things down you can see it is now start touching and only that part is start touching and I also may want to bring down the uh, ear and on the tip of the ear when I pick on the front view I'm going to select the whole row so I'm gonna go back to the top view using the control holding the control and deselect all of this okay and then come back to the front view I kind of pull the tip down a little bit and again depends on how fast your computer uh, is sometimes they are really slow okay so it just kind of give a little bit time and keep checking on the image make sure that you are not stretching it too much it will look weird if you're stretching too much okay so um, you're going to spend some time to tweak it a little bit I also like to have the the bottom of the body which is the bottom maybe bottom two row oh, let me select this bottom two row and have them coming more together so it's kind of blended back to the coin just instead of that's a cut right there um, look like I still have that height there so I'm going to pick on the front view I'm going to deselect whatever now is inside of the coin and bring the top a little bit lower all right so let's take a look on the perspective and as you can see in the perspective is coming kind of blended into the coin all right if that is what you like just uh, hit a couple times on the escape key and then you can delete the bounding box if you want all right so that's it this is really good and I like it whatever thick thickness end up with I actually will take a few more times if I wanted to do and then so that will be the image that we bring into here all we need to do now is we need to turn the coin as Put the ghost I will need to once everything is done and tweak into the ideal high and everything you like uh, we are going to turn the coin into the mesh and then use the mesh bowling to bowling it together 
I will leave the rest to you for you to tweak it into the way you like it, but I would like to talk about the text on the bottom. The text on the bottom, what we can do is I'm going to find out this uh, H there, and by the way to find it out is we're going to use the command, it's called duplicate H. And I'm going to pick up this H right there. All right. To be easier to see, I'm gonna put them into other layer and also turn the rest of things off. Okay, so let's go to the top view and take a look on that. Here is the straight line right here. I'm gonna use this straight line to trim the rest of the top off. So this is the reference to show where the text is going to be. In order to know what is the size of the text and the position on that curve, I need to know the length. So I'm going to type it on the command bar. Uh, it's the length. And uh, pick up this curve. Hit enter. And then it will tell me is 28.472 millimeter. So on the side, I'm going to draw exactly the same length for 28.472. 28.472 Alright, so that will give me the exact length there. I'm going to type it uh, just using an example for my website. So I'm going to type it triple W PJ Chen design dot com for the text on this coin. Alright. And then uh, make sure you group them. So every time you pick them, they will be together. So I kind of want to scale it down and put it in front of it. Okay. To be make sure it will be right in the center, I would like to use a align tool to align them. All right. So they will appear really nice in the center of that coin. Okay. The command to get the text onto the position, we are going to the transform flow along the curve. So this is the object that's going to flow along the curve. Enter. You pick up this base curve and then you come in here to pick up your target curve. Now the text is right there. Let's bring back the coin, right? And then I might want to move up a little bit and then the rest of it is about the bowling. So this is what we have and make sure that your text is not too high because when you print that might be an issue. Okay, so let's take a look on the render view. All right, this is what we have for the Yoda coin. I hope you enjoy it. I would like to challenge you to use any other of the image that you can find and make a coin. And if you can share with me, that will be great. You can find my email address at the below link. I hope you enjoy the video and please comment and share my video that helped me a lot on the YouTube ranking and that also is the way for me to keep making free tutorial. Thank you very much. I will see you next Monday.